Peter Schiff, again, a chief economist, global strategist, and also the founder of Schiff Gold and owner of Euro Pack, joins us once again to unfortunately give us the bad news on the state of the U.S. economy. Peter, um, where do I begin? Whether it's the oil or uh, taking away the dollar as a monetary source around the world or Biden's just horrible economic policies back home. All three of them are pointing to a recession this year in this nation and a destabilization of the dollar around the globe. And I'm scared, to be honest. Yeah, well, we'd be very lucky to escape with just a recession. I think oh. this is a depression. We're probably already in it. It's just going to get worse. You know, you started by talking about the jobs report. And one of the reasons it wasn't much worse, uh, as far as the numbers are concerned, is because government created something like 50,000 jobs. The private sector job creation was well below estimates. But there's a big problem here with these government jobs because the taxpayers get, get the bill. Most of these bureaucrats aren't producing anything. In fact, they're making the rest of us less productive. We need private sector jobs that pay for themselves and that add to our productivity, not more government jobs that require taxpayer funding and diminish our collective productivity. But the real threat you mentioned is going to be the foreigners pulling the rug out from under the economy mm -hmm. by abandoning the dollar, because that's what makes this dysfunctional economy that we have possible. We have a trillion dollar a year trade deficit. That means we import a trillion dollars a year worth of stuff that we didn't make. And the only reason we could do it is because foreigners will take the paper that we print for all the stuff that they produce. But if they don't want to do that anymore, then how is our economy going to function without all this stuff? Because we certainly don't have the factories to produce it. Yeah, you know, I'm reading this Forbes article, uh, back to the jobs thing, Peter, because that just still amazes me when I watch mainstream media continue to brag up these job reports when they come out, try to make the Biden regime look good when they're lying to the American people. And that just, I'll tell you, Peter, you know, I'm sure you get upset when you see economists go on the mainstream media and lie about the economy. That's how I feel when I watch so-called journalists or talk show hosts lie about the economy to the people. And I'm reading a Forbes article here from just a couple days ago. Job cuts are up almost 400 percent this year as jobless claims are on the rise. Yet they come out and they say <laughs> unemployment's down and that's an okay number, 200 and some thousand. Could have been better, but it's not horrible. But then, Peter, there's all these articles of all these tech companies cutting 7,000 here, 15,000 there, 12,000 there. Disney's cutting thousands. I mean... Oh. All the good jobs are the ones that are being eliminated. Look at the jobs that weren't created by government. The number one is leisure and hospitality. These are restaurants and hotels. And of course, a lot of these are people returning from their, uh, their, their COVID uh, absences. But these are low paying jobs. And in fact, many of the jobs that are being created are part time jobs for the people who lost their good full time jobs. The people who are getting laid off from these tech companies are getting two or three jobs uh, waiting tables and working in hotels, and somehow the economy is stronger because on a numbers basis, we've got more jobs, but the quality of those jobs has gone down. And most people that have two or three lousy jobs, they would rather have one good paying job, but unfortunately, they no longer have that option. Yeah, exactly. When I'm seeing places like Meta, Facebook, Alphabet, Microsoft, Goldman Sachs, all cutting thousands in this Wall Street Journal article and saying point blank, we're cutting them ahead of fears of a major recession. They're telling you it's coming. The CEOs of these major companies know what's happening out there. I just don't understand how the, well, I do, how yeah. the Biden regime turns their back on all the evidence. Well, plus we are in the early stages of another financial crisis. Nobody wants to acknowledge, but that's exactly what's going on here. But this financial crisis, by the time it's over, is going to be far worse than the one that we had in 2008, because we have a much bigger problem today than we had then. And it's the consequence is a much larger financial crisis now than the one we had then. And it's going to end, I believe, with an all out U.S. dollar currency and sovereign debt crisis. And then inflation is going to explode through the roof. Oh, God. You know, I always tell my viewers that I bring on the best guests to try and provide the most accurate details, facts, and the truth about stories happening here at home and abroad. And folks, I trust Peter like as one of the top economists out there. So when he's telling you this, believe it. I know it's scary. I don't want to hear it. But this is where we're headed. And my last one, too, is a simple one, Peter. Can this ship 
be righted in time to at least ease some of this recession burden that the American people are going to face no matter what, because two more years of this same policy is going to destroy us. Well, there's nothing that we can do to avert this. I mean, we're going to have to suffer the consequences of, of, of failed policies that have gone on for basically decades. But the only way that we can minimize the pain and accelerate the healing of the economy and rebuilding something viable mm -hmm. is if the government completely gets out of the way. We need massive reductions in the size of government. Government needs to cut spending across the board and repeal all sorts of rules and regulations to liberate the economy, to unshackle it from government taxation and regulation so we can dig ourselves out of this ditch that decades of central planning and central banking have placed us in. Uh, I said that was my last question, but you just said something I totally forgot to ask you about. The banking crisis, you said central banking. We all keep hearing fears more banks are going to collapse after those last two banks here and the one overseas. What are you hearing with the banks and how many more well, could go down? Well, a lot of banks would fail if the government and the Fed allowed it to happen. But unfortunately, they're not going to let them fail. They're going to print a bunch of money and create inflation instead. And so instead of losing your money at the bank because your bank fails, your bank won't fail. It's going to get bailed out. But your money that's at the bank is going to lose its value. So, yeah, you can go to the bank and take out your money, but then take it to the grocery store or the gas station. You're not going to be able to buy very much. Wow. Okay, folks, sorry to start off a Monday like this with Peter, but uh, hide it under the mattress, buy some gold, bury it out back. I don't know what to tell you. It's not going to be safe under the mattress, but gold is a good idea. So <laughs> well, if you got too. a lot of guns and ammo, it's safe under my mattress, Peter. No, but anyway. it's paper. Inflation is going to destroy it. <laughs> oh, that's it. true. That's true. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you, I got to buy gold and stuff it in the mattress and sleep on it, right? That's right. And okay. you can protect it with your, with, with your, with your ammo. With your guns and ammo. <laughs> Peter Schiff, as always, we appreciate your straightforwardness and your honesty about what's actually happening out there and not what the regime and the mainstream media spews to the American taxpayer. Thank you, Peter. Take care.